we tired of the devil pressing us down. Come on, y'all. Come on, it's time to fight. What's happening, family? It's time to pray. I want to look at Psalm 46 on today before we go to God in prayer. The first three verses in this psalm. This psalm, in some of your translations, is entitled, God, the Refuge of His People. The Passion Translation titles it, God is on our side. But the points within the text are what resonates in our hearts and minds that remind us that in this season, prayer and the presence of God, the power of our God, is continuing to be something that we seek after and that we need while we go through this storm. Listen to it in the New American Standard. Then I want to share it with you out of the Passion Translation. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change and though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains quake at its swelling, at, uh, at its swelling pride. Selah at the end of verse three. And then as you go through the text, you'll notice that there are at least four things that stand out of this passage that helps us to really walk away being encouraged and built up by who God is and why prayer is so important for the people of God. Number one, notice the facts of the text. Verse number one, especially out of the passage, translation, God, you are such a safe and powerful place to find refuge. You're a proven help in time of trouble, more than enough and always available whenever I need you. The first thing that you ought to see in this passage are that the facts of the text remind us of how significant it is that God is on your side. He makes the statement, you God, are our refuge, the King James and the New American Standard. In you, the passage says, you are my safe and powerful place. You are where I take refuge. Fact number one, God is your safe place. He is your strength. He, he becomes the base that you go to like a child in a, in, a, in a crowded room looking for their parent, like a frustrated teen looking for that ear to listen to. God is your safe place. He's the one you run to when your friends are turning their back, when no one wants to hear you, when you can't reach who you normally reach. God is always your person. He's always the one you lean on. He's always the one you go to. God is your refuge. He's your safe place. He's your strength. But here's the best part about it. He's standing ready to help you whenever you need. The text says here, you are more than enough. Oh, I love that. And always available whenever I need you. I love how the personalization in the text takes place. Yes, he's everybody's God. Yes, he is our father. Yes, he's God for the whole world, but he's there whenever I need him. And I need him different than how you need him and you need him different than how I need him but the blessing is that the reason facts are he's my safe place he's my strength and he's standing ready for however you need him but let me give you number two not only do you see the facts of the text you and I ought to see as a result of those facts as a result of God being your safe place your strength the one standing ready to help you you ought to have a certain fearlessness in your stance look at verse number two so we will not fear, I'm sorry, we will never fear, even if every structure of support were to crumble away. We will never fear, even when the earth quakes and shakes, moving mountains and casting them into the sea. The second point is very clear. You and I ought to have, as it relates to our relationship with God, an even if kind of faith. I'm not going to move even if the, the, the earth moves. I'm not going to move even if the water swelled. I'm not going to move even if whatever. Your mentality has to be that I'm not going to allow anything in this created world to cause me to have fear. Remember what fear is. Fear is false evidence appearing to be real. That's what fear is. Fear is an emotional response to a perceived threat, whether real or imagined. Our reality then as covenant followers is that God is on our side. Therefore, I'm not going to allow anything to cause me to have fear. Your reality is nothing, nothing in this world, no thing in this world can cause you to move from a place where you are trusting and honoring God as being on your side. So we take a stance of fearlessness. We take a stance that says, because God is with me, I'm not letting anything move me. But let me give you number three. Not only do we see the facts in the text, and number two, the fearlessness of your stance, but you need to see number three, the faith of the disciple. 
The faith of the disciple brings you back to the focus that you have. See, notice there's some nuances in the passage that you'll miss if you don't slow down and read them. Watch verse 2 and 3 again. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should shake or, cha or quake. We will not move, though the mountains slip into the heart of the sea. Watch verse 3. Though, it, though its waters roar and foam, and though the mountains quake at its swelling place. Notice that your faith is so anchored that you can see beyond the shadow. Listen to it out of the passage. The raging roar of the stormy winds and crashing waves cannot erode my faith in you. You and I see beyond the shadow that we realize that this is, this is not any substance. It's just the casting of an image, a distorted and a disformed a casting of an image from something smaller. It looks big, but it's just a shadow being projected by something small. So we see that there, there is no substance. I'm not going to be moved at the loudness of the roar. I'm not going to be moved at the shaking of the earth. I'm not going to be moved by that which does not have substance. My faith is anchored in what holds me. My faith is anchored in God. So see life correctly. See the world around you with the eyes God wants you to have. See the shadow as it is without a body, only casting of an image that's distorted and larger than it actually is. See Satan and his tactics to deceive, distort, and dismay the believer from trusting God. See your own selves and our weaknesses to navigate the uncharted terrain around us. See sinful humanity and fallen people doing fallen things in a fallen context. See the season that you're in. Please hear me on this, that it's just a season. Life has not always been this way. Life will not always be this way. And praise God, see the Savior who in the middle of everything is always faithful, always true. He's always holy. He's always just. You and I take the faith of the disciple in this passage and we walk with him. We walk with God. Notice now, notice we've seen the facts of the text. Number two, we've seen the fearlessness of your stance. Number three, we see the faith of the disciple. But can I give you a fourth point? Number four, the focus on your breath. At verse number 46, at the very end, there's a word at the end of your text. The paraphrases simply use the phrase, pause in his presence. Most of your translations will say, Selah, Selah. Uh, when this text was given, you remember that it was written to the choir director, Korah and the, the, the Levitical priests that would be useful for the, for the praise and worship of God's people at that time. And more than likely, when you read these Psalms, where you read the, the term Selah, it was a breathing point. It was like the ending of a crescendo when you take a breath and you pause before you go into the next stanza of the song. Here, it's a reminder that as a result of everything we've just looked at, as a result of God being my safe place, my strength, and my, my and standing near to hear me, as a result of me not being afraid of anything and taking the faith of a believer, I look at all of that and I pause. I take a breath. I take the moment to remind myself that I ought to take it all in. Selah is a moment to remember what brought you to this point. It's a spot for you to take perspective on who God is. Take perspective on the strength and refuge. Take perspective on everything. Sometimes you just need to stop and breathe. Take a deep breath and gain some perspective. Take a deep breath and remember that even though you've got trouble, even though you've got issues, even though you've got things coming your way, God is still your God. And if God is your God, you can breathe, pause for the moment, and move forward trusting who he is. Can I challenge you? Take a moment and breathe and remember the facts that God is with you. Take a moment and breathe. And don't allow false evidence to appear real. Take a moment and breathe and gather your stance to be faithful, even with the roaring of the sea, the quaking of the ground underneath you. Take a moment and breathe because God is still your God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We thank you and we bless you 
for being our God. We thank you, Lord God, for allowing us the privilege of knowing that you will never leave us. You will never forsake us, that you are here with us, guiding us through whatever we're going through. You are on our side. You are our refuge. You are our strength. You are the one who will guide us from this season to the next. We call on you, Father, for your healing and your strength, your deliverance and your power. We call on you to give us what we need, Lord God, in those moments of trepidation, in those moments of fear, in those moments where we vacillate, even though we've read the text. Help us, Father, to continue to lift our head to see you, to not be taken back by the roar of the sea-like things that are against us. Help us not to be moved by the quaking of these human conditions that shake us at our very foundation. Help us, Lord, to remain secure. Help us to remain anchored. Help us to hold on to you. Help us to remain steady and true because we know that you are our God and since we have you as our God, everything is going to be all right. We love you. We are honor you. We praise you. Heal and deliver. Strengthen and secure. Bless us, Father God, to lift our heads and take one more step as we move closer to where you're going to bring us and out of where we are. Lord God, we pray that you move us through them better than the way we came in this thing. Help us to know you more intimately, to walk with you deeper, to hold your hand tighter, to be more shaped into your image and your character and your likeness. Allow us, Father, to not waste the crisis, but to be closer to you as a result of it. And Lord God, right now we call on you to continue to comfort, heal, and strengthen those that need you in a special way. Be their God and help them to gain a new understanding of who you are as they tra traverse through the pain that they're dealing with. We are you. We praise you. We love you. We bless and adore you. And we ask, oh God, that you help us to continue to focus on you. Thank you for being our God. Thank you for being our safe place. Thank you for being our strength. Thank you, Lord God, for being at the steady, ready to come to us whenever we need you. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name, we together say amen and amen. Listen, continue to pray to God. Continue to trust him. Continue to keep your focus on him. And remember, breathe and stay faithful. I'm going to pray for you. I'm asking you, please, pray for me. And let's watch our God change everything around us. God bless you. And God keep you. Everything is going to be all right. Though your day seems dark as night. Satan's strong, but God is stronger. So keep the faith and you got to keep pressing on. Everything is going to be okay. God has promised he will make a way. God be for us, he can destroy us. Stand tall, the victory is won. What can separate us from God's love? So tribulation on no Israel, no persecution, no nakedness. Oh no, 